This is Stephen E. Arnold. Dark Cyber is our new series of videos about online access related to the dark web, cybercrime, and lesser known internet services. This week's story lineup includes Phishing, the old is new again. Telegram is now more than chat. Domain hacks present serious risks. Firearms can be bought on the dark web and a drone technology update. Now our May 7, 2019 program. Checkpoint and SciInt, two cyber intelligence firms, have released information about a new phishing toolkit now available for purchase on the dark web. The Apache Next Generation Advanced Phishing Kit uses a fill-in-the-blanks approach to launching a phishing attack. The method is similar to the specialized tools developed by commercial firms selling to government agencies, but expect to pay around $200 for the toolkit. Professional phishing software costs orders of magnitude more. The dark web software is a bargain. Now this system includes an administrative panel which can display the compromised victim's financial data. The two companies determined that the developer of this software uses the handle or pseudonym of Apache, but upon investigation, another alias emerged, a persona named Douglas Aria. You can download the analysis of the phishing tool at the URL shown on your screen. The messaging app Telegram can do more than just send short text messages to a friend. ZDNet reported that some source code allegedly used by Iran's cyber army was leaked and distributed via Telegram. How? Well, the messaging app Telegram allows a user to include attachments of up to 1.5 gigabytes of data. Bad actors are adaptable, just like some diseases. And with dark websites under scrutiny from law enforcement, the criminals seek to use communication and distribution mechanisms that the bad actors perceive are more secure. The messaging app Telegram makes it possible for an individual to create a secret channel, give users access to that channel, and then use the messaging app as a way to sell or distribute contraband. Telegram is owned by the two brothers who created Vkontakte, the popular Russian social media service. Telegram has its offices in Berlin and the company operates as a non-profit organization. The use of encrypted messaging apps with support for closed groups makes it possible for dark web vendors to distribute digital content and operate within a communications bubble which they perceive as more secure than traditional Tor services. Domain name server hacking is an increasingly popular and potentially more threatening activity. Talos, the cyber intelligence unit of Cisco, reported that what looked like a simple denial of service attack on an obscure and low profile company called KFAX was nothing more than an attempt to compromise one of the foundation stone internet service providers. There are about a dozen of these foundation stone vendors, and the attack sought to compromise the owner of Kafax, who works at Netnod. And Netnod, based in Sweden, is one of the original foundation DNS servers. Talos professionals believe the CAFAX attack may have been backed by another country's cyber intelligence service. Why attack a DNS foundation server? 
Well, the reason is that once a domain server is under the control of the attacker, certain functions can be taken over easily. For example, redirects, the creation and use of shadow domains, and using that as a launch pad for other types of cyber attacks. Several domains tracked by Talos pointed to Syria. The cyber attackers used a sophisticated multi-layered exploit. Instead of a single angle, the sequence of nested programs executed to mislead and confuse defensive mechanisms. These overlapping procedures, techniques, and tactics are unlikely to be the work of a single hacker. To get a copy of the Talos report and more information about this unit of Cisco, navigate to the URL shown on your screen. Can you buy a handgun on a dark website? The answer may be yes. A research paper called Assessing the Practices and Products of Dark Web Firearm Vendors provides some additional information about this criminal activity. The authors are experts in criminal justice and teach at Michigan State University and Tarleton State University in Texas. The dark website data were gathered via automated crawlers between February and May 2016, and the researchers investigated secondary literature through June 2018. The research team narrowed its focus to six dark web weapon sites. Now, the academic publication process is time consuming, and the paper reported the results of a study in 2019. These dates are important because significant changes have been taking place within the dark web itself in the last two and a half years. The paper revealed that general knowledge about weapon sales on the dark web was limited. The dark web contraband markets have been online for more than a decade, yet there is an information gap. The study found that Handguns were the most popular type weapon offered by dark web vendors. For example, in this sample, the researchers reported that 64% of the weapons were handguns, 17% semi-automatic long guns, and 4% automatic weapons. Other findings included the fact that payment for these weapons was made by digital currency, such as Bitcoin, and the delivery of the weapon was made using standard postal or commercial shipping systems, with the weapons broken down and placed in a carton containing books, shoes, food products, computer parts, and other innocuous items. The paper is a useful contribution to the understanding of the dark web firearms business. However, due to the changes forced upon dark web merchants from stepped up enforcement activities by the FBI and Europol, traditional dark web e-commerce market selling contraband have been shifting gears. More dark web vendors are moving their printable activities to encrypted messaging apps and relying on forums to publicize their services. Vendors have had to adapt in order to stay one step ahead of law enforcement. DarkCyber also wants to point out two other points of interest. First, some dark web firearm sites may be operated by law enforcement agencies as part of an investigation. A second consideration is that a small sample size focused only on dark web e-commerce sites ignores the fast-growing alternative sales channels. You can download the research paper at the URL shown on your screen. One dark cyber viewer mocked our inclusion of the shotgun toting drone developed by Russian students. The viewer wanted us to showcase 
a more sophisticated surveillance UAV. On your screen is a picture of the U.S. Department of Defense D-21 drone developed more than a decade ago. Now this drone flies at more than 2,000 miles an hour and it is launched piggyback powered by a Markhard ramjet. More details about the D-21 only became available in March 2019 when information about the weapon was declassified. D-21 was primarily a surveillance device, but Dark Cyber believes the drone could perform as a cruise missile. Is there a more current U.S. drone? Well, we suggest you watch for information about the SR-72, which is believed to be a more modern weapon system, and it's unlikely that the SR-72 will tote a shotgun. For more Dark Cyber news and information, read our new Dark Cyber weblog called Dark Cyber Annex. You can find more stories at www.arnoldit.com front slash WordPress. In June 2019 at the Techno Security and Digital Forensics Conference, I will deliver a one-hour lecture about Dark Web version 2. And in this talk, for law enforcement, cybersecurity, and intelligence professionals, I report on our 18-month research project into the metastasization of the dark web. Among the signals of digital cancer we will identify are the use of game forums for grooming and terrorism recruitment and the consolidation of illegal video streaming services under the auspices of large criminal oligarchs operating from Eastern Europe. And there are four more warning signals about changes in the dark web. If you can't attend the conference, we do offer a one-hour webinar on this subject. Just write us at the URL shown in the program's credits. This is Stephen E. Arnold, logging off.